So I thought we'd do a little update uh, because it is like the third week of April now and I haven't really filmed a lot this month. Um, I was sick for that first whole week of April uh, and then the second week of April, last week, I basically spent that entire week catching up on stuff I missed from the first week. Uh, so yeah, I haven't really recorded much. I've filmed a couple clips here and there, but not a whole lot. But what I wanted to talk about is notebooks, because I've been hyper-focusing on my notebooks and my planners at the minute. Uh, like, major, major. <laughs> it kind of happened, I was watching YouTube a lot when I was sick, and I found this YouTuber, I'll put like a little screenshot or something of their channel, um, Megan Rhiannon? I think her name is, and she does a lot of uh, videos about her notebooks. She uses both like a planner and then she has what's called a commonplace notebook, which I'd never heard of before, uh, and I binge watched a whole bunch of her videos um, and I got sucked into learning about all these different journaling systems and all these different notebook systems that different people use. She uses, and I think she now uses, the Hobonichi Cousin. And honestly, that looks perfect, and I low-key wanted to get that, but it's really, the Hobonichi can be quite expensive, so I didn't. Um, but I did get a new planner, and I did start a commonplace notebook. So, <laughs> you might be able to tell I reorganised my desk a little bit to accommodate all of my notebooks so that I can reach them better. I used to have them stacked like this on top of each other, but it became really annoying <laughs> to try and get to them. Wait, let me turn the light on. There we go. Okay, it became really annoying to try and get to them like that, so they now have their own little dedicated space here and I can just reach in and grab them when I need them. We'll start with this one on the far right is my journal. And I had this before, this whole hyper-focus situation. Uh, it is just where I journal. I write out my thoughts. Um, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I will write out. Sometimes I write what happened in the day, if it was a particularly interesting day. And I also put things like ticket stubs and uh, like cinema tickets, stickers I get from stuff I buy, like things like that. Just any kind of um, thing I come across that I don't want to throw out. Um, I end up putting it in there as well. And then I also have, here in the middle, this black one, that is my sketchbook, which I also had before I started this whole thing. Uh, yeah, it's it's my sketchbook. I'm using the ugly sketchbook system at the minute, um, which is credited to Fran Meneses, otherwise known as Fran Nerd. Uh, she's a really great illustrator, and it's a really great system uh, for getting through creative burnout, and it's been really helpful for me, so. The one I started just before this hyperfocus is this pink one, right here, in between my sketchbook and my journal. And that pink one is what I'm currently calling my comfort book. So I've been putting stuff in there that just makes me feel comfortable, that comforts me and makes me feel happy and seen, and I like it. Um, I probably won't share stuff from that one, because I guess it's kind of personal. And then the two on the left are the ones that I'm kind of keen to share today, and that's my planner and my commonplace notebook. So this is the planner I got in, basically in response to <laughs> this hyper-focus on notebooks and planning. Um, again, I really wanted to get Hobonichi just because they pretty much, I made a list of everything I wanted in the planner and they ticked it off pretty spectacularly. Uh, I think if I use this one pretty faithfully next spring or at the start of next year, I'll get a Hobonichi, I'll treat myself to one, but for now, this is my planner. Um, I found it on Amazon and I don't really like shopping on Amazon, but it was the only one that filled like all of the things that I wanted. So yeah, we just have like screen. I haven't filled this out. Uh, so this is the daily setup. You can kind of ignore these first few pages because I'm still kind of working out how I want to use it. What I liked about it is that 
there was no set date for any page. A lot of planners start in January, end in December, that's it. Um, but one thing about me is I can be quite, not inconsistent, but my motivation levels wane a lot. Um, one day I may be really, really productive and one day I may just be completely burnt out. Um, so what I like about this one is I can put in the date and circle the day of the week myself. Uh, so I never, they're all blank pages essentially, and I never, even if I miss a couple days of using my planner, I won't waste pages. Um, because I can just write the next day I use it in the planner. Rather than having set days and then wasting a day when I'm not using it. I also like that it has, as you can see, the time for that date, which weirdly was really difficult to find. There's quite a lot that have like a schedule system like this, but most of them start at about seven or eight o'clock in the morning and then end at five or six in the evening. I'm guessing because most people would use a planner for work and most people work a nine to five. I don't really work on a nine to five system. I work part time as a nightclub bartender, so during the weekends I am almost entirely nocturnal. I start work at 10 o'clock in the evening and finish at 7am. So that wouldn't really work for me, and I do most of my productivity ends up being... I say that, I took a nap at 6 o'clock on this day. Um, but most of the time my productivity is in the evening. Uh, so I needed essentially a 24 hour day, and this was the closest I could kind of find. It starts at 4 a.m., uh, so I don't really mind that, that's fine. It then has a task section, and then notes at the bottom. Uh, so on this day, we finished Star Season 2, so I just noted that down. In these pages, I'm still kind of trying to work out how I want to use it, um, but I gradually got to this point where I really worked it out and I like it. And this schedule section, it isn't me deciding what I'm going to do, it's more a record of what I actually did. Um, I have pretty bad memory problems, um, and without a record or something to remind me, I will forget most things, um, including my day-to-day, -day, which is one of the reasons I started making videos on YouTube. It is essentially a video diary for me to look back on, and I wanted this planner to kind of complement that. I can look back on these days and be like, oh, I did chores before lunch, and then I edited a video, and then I had dinner, and I went to sleep at a good time. Well, good job, me. With the tasks, I cross them out if I complete them, and then if I don't, I'll put a little arrow at the end that just means that I've taken it from that day and moved it on to the next. And I've been using this, I would say, on and off. Um, since I got it, but I really, really like it. Um, it's been really nice, it's been helpful. The task section is huge, to the point I'm never gonna fill that out. Um, yeah, I have a cold, so <laughs> that was when I was sick. Um, but I'm really, really enjoying it. The next notebook, and kind of the one that I really, really wanted to talk about, is my commonplace notebook. This is um, the main thing that Megan's videos introduced me to, and I, I love it so much. Essentially, a commonplace book is a notebook where you collect thoughts, you collect ideas, quotes, anything you've read or you've seen, articles you like, um, anything that you find interesting and you want to keep a hold of some way, you can put in your commonplace notebook. Um, and I find that the act of writing it out yourself um, really helps you remember it as well. A little note fact about me, I'm autistic, and funnily enough, so is Megan, this YouTuber, um, that introduced me to commonplace, um, notebooking. And as an autistic person, I find I have this intense urge to collect things, and not in the sense of, like, stamps. Well, I also collect physical items, but, um, for me, mainly it's information. I... My Pinterest is full of thousands of images in 50 boards with many different sections to each board. I have so many screenshots of so many random things. I have a whole 
notion of pages and pages of information and links to information. Um, and honestly, sometimes I find it really overwhelming that I have these kind of archives of information that I know I find interesting and I don't want to get rid of. But also I have, there's no real way for me to access them and look at them coherently. Um, so the commonplace system has been really helpful for me in terms of getting all that information in one place coherently organized and then I can just take the notebook and put it away and I don't have like screenshots in my camera roll distracting me or making me stressed or safari um, tabs just open with information so I stole <laughs> I stole Megan's uh, use of index dots uh, I think this is a pretty common thing with commonplacing um, but I saw her using it and I really liked it so I have four index doc stickers and I have the dots fit really nicely in the back of my commonplace book so I have yellow is for quotes blue is thoughts on cool things <laughs> but it's blue is just it's kind of evolved as I've used the book into just sort of general things that I want to take note of. Green is articles and red is poetry. And then I also just have some decoration, some uh, nasturtium, or nasturtium, and a little Baby Yoda sticker. It's just been really nice. I just put whatever dot it is, the information. If it's a quote, I put obviously where it's from, who said it. Um, so blue, this was a tweet. Um, <laughs> I'm actually no longer on Twitter. I haven't used it in months, but a screenshot of this tweet has been in my camera roll for almost a year now. And I just had nowhere to put that screenshot and I didn't want to get rid of it because I, the tweet made me think and I wanted to do something with that information, but I had nowhere to, to put it. And now, I printed it out, it's in my commonplace notebook, and I can delete that screenshot without stressing about losing that information. And then I get to put my own thoughts on what it made me think. Um, it's just been really nice. Poetry, uh, sticker, this image that I found, but yeah, this was, the image was about grief, this quote is about grief. So sometimes I'm like, I have a theme for a page. Oh my God. This, I had this screenshot in my camera roll for forever as well. It was a proposed design for Serbian money. And it's just this really lovely drawing of a bear. And I had nowhere to put that either. And now it's here and it's collected. Um, a screenshot from an episode of Love, Death and Robots and my thoughts. More poetry, more quotes. This swan that is from the Iron Age and was preserved in the permafrost. And again, more cool stuff that I just would have forgotten or I would have kept haphazardly somewhere and knowing that I kept it haphazardly would have made me feel stressed. It's like background noise that I can't get rid of. And now it's not background noise because I've done something with it. I don't know, it's really difficult to explain uh, I just finished The Bell Jar, so I copied down some quotes that I really liked. It's really hard to explain why I find this so effective and so comforting, um, but I'm really, really enjoying it so far. And I still have, like, on my Notion, I have a links page to a bunch of articles, and at some point I want to get all the effective, like, the stuff the really good bits out of those articles and put them in my commonplace notebook and then I can delete that whole page. I don't need it anymore because I'll have it in here. And it's clearing up a lot of space in my brain for other things. I think that's one thing about being autistic is that you tend to have like a million threads going in your brain at any one time. And somehow the physical act of commonplacing is helping me get rid of some of those threads so I can think about other things or just be calm for once. So I'm really, really, really enjoying that. And I will link Megan's channel because I'm really enjoying her content. Obviously I've benefited from her content in that she's introduced me to commonplacing. Uh, but also I'm just generally, I don't follow many 
or I don't see many autistic creators on YouTube, so it was really nice to see another autistic creator. Especially because she doesn't shy away from talking about her autism. Um, she mentions it pretty much every video in some capacity, because the thing about autism is it affects literally everything in your life. But most people, I feel like we're discouraged from saying anything about it, even though it affects literally every part of our lives, we're discouraged from saying it, um, or mentioning it, because it feels too much to other people. Um, so I really respect her openness in that way, and honestly it makes me want to feel like I can talk about my autism more. Anyway, I wanted to share that, and also the star sticker <laughs> and the tiger on the front I really love. I wanted to share that and talk about my notebooks for way, way too long, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hyperfixations go crazy, and my notebooks hyperfixation is going hard today, okay. Also, um, I'm doing my first market, uh, having my first stall, physical stall for my art next week. Um, it's next weekend, I'm very nervous, but I've been preparing for it, so I have my... Mm, I have my uh, tablecloth there, and I got this amazing stand for my prints. Uh, and I, as you can see, I've tested it out, they all fit, it looks great. Um, so yeah, I've been quietly preparing for that, as well as being sick. Um, and notebooks, and all that thing. I'm nervous about it, because I'm so scared that I'm going to turn up and no one's going to even look at my stall, but you never know. We'll see how we go. I'm preparing myself as best we can. Yeah.